What's up YouTube? Have you been wondering how Adobe Illustrator was going to run on an M1 Mac? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. All right guys, so you know that a couple weeks ago I did a video about whether or not it was a great time to leave Adobe to get one of these M1 Macs. And I didn't have an M1 Mac at that time. In fact, I don't think anybody did except for early reviewers, but I do have one here now. Now in that video, I recommended that you not go ahead and upgrade if you didn't need a computer right now. And the reason for that is that these are the base model Macs. They are not going to get any worse. They are only going to get better in the future as they bring out the more pro machines. So it's a great time to wait and see what happens, see how much more powerful they get. But my wife was in need of a new laptop and we had been holding off until the M1 Max came out so that we could get her something new that would last for a really long time on the new chipset. She doesn't do a lot of intense graphic or video work and so she didn't need the best of the best or anything like that. So we actually have here, we actually have the gold MacBook Air. It's the base model, seven core GPU, eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. I was super, super nervous to get anything with less than 16 gigabytes of RAM until I started seeing the reviews come out about these computers. And then I realized that for a lot of people, eight gigabytes was actually going to be fine because of the gained efficiency from this chip, which is just mind blowing. But one thing still remains to be seen, and that is how well do the Adobe apps run on these M1 Macs? Because we know that they haven't been recompiled yet to run on Apple Silicon. And a lot of people have tested Photoshop and a lot of people have tested Premiere. I've even seen somebody test After Effects, but I haven't seen anybody test Illustrator or InDesign yet. And I know that a lot of graphic designers are probably wondering, could they use one of these machines? And so that's what we're going to find out today. We're going to go ahead, download Illustrator onto here. And you'll see that it says that it is not optimized for this Mac, but we can go ahead and download it anyway. And Rosetta 2 is going to go ahead and translate that for us. And then it will act like it's running an Intel architecture here on this computer. And some people have said they've even seen their apps run better than they did on Intel architecture. And we just have to see if that's true or not here for Illustrator. I haven't seen anybody do this. And I think that's because Illustrator is not the most intensive of the Creative Cloud apps. So most people are trying to do benchmarks. They're trying to show just how powerful these chips are. I just want to see how Illustrator runs. I'm not going to be doing any benchmarks. I am running screen recording software at the same time. So that will take some resources, but that doesn't seem to have been a problem in other people's tests. So really, we're just going to see how well Illustrator runs on here. If there's hiccups, can we do the types of things that we need to do? And so let's go ahead, we'll open it up here. And the first thing that we see is what's new. It opened up fine, no problems there. And it's telling us about Illustrator on iPad. We've talked about that quite a bit. If you want to see a video about Illustrator on the iPad, go ahead and click this link right here. And I'll show you how it runs on an iPad Pro. Enhanced cloud documents, recolor artwork got an update. So this is Illustrator 2021. So they're just telling us a little bit of things. This is one of my favorite new things in 2021 right here is the type precision. I think that's going to be super useful. I hope Affinity brings that to their software as well. And then library sharing. Nice. Okay. So nothing too major here. New stuff in Illustrator. Let's go ahead and click done. And it's going to say cloud documents. You can see that the documents from Illustrator on my iPad, where I was doing the videos for, have actually populated here already because they're in the cloud. And so Creative Cloud is syncing that up. And that's one of those things that I've always said, if you want cloud storage and cloud functionality between your documents, your programs, your devices, Creative Cloud is a good way to go. And it makes sense to pay a monthly subscription for something that's an ongoing service like that. What doesn't make a lot of sense is for people who don't use the cloud features, they don't use the ongoing services to pay a monthly subscription for the apps over and over again. And so let's go ahead and look here. We're just going to create a new document. And again, I'm not doing any special tests. I'm just seeing what it can do, how snappy it is. It's very snappy so far. Let's just go ahead and we'll start with a letter sized page and create. Okay, we did get a beach ball there for a second as it opened up, but that didn't take very long at all. It was very quick, but we did get the beach ball. Let's go ahead and we'll just start off. You know, my favorite test is to try and make a van. So let's go ahead, we'll grab our rectangle tool. We'll lay down the base of our van. 
icon here. Round out our corners. Grab our lips. Tires. Duplicate. Rectangles for the windows. Make the inside of the tires. Come in. Command C to copy, Command F to paste in front. There we go. Option drag to duplicate. Shift to keep it in line. like that one went behind. So let's check our layers. Pull that up. Target that ellipse. Drag it up above. All right. So we were able to do that pretty easily. Drag that up to make a window there. And now let's go ahead and let's add in some color here. So properties panel, we're going to make the van yellow. Select all these windows and we're going to make it blue. Go and go ahead and select these tires. Go ahead and make them black. I'll select them all, duplicate them. And we're going to remove our stroke from this one. Okay, now let's go ahead and we're going to try a Pathfinder operation to make a partial circle to be the logo in the front of this van. Let's go ahead, we'll drag this off so we can get an exact copy here. Drag one of these circles up. Resize around the center. Take that. Grab our Shape Builder tool. I just recently did a video on the Shape Builder tool on the iPad. So we've had it on desktop for a long time, but it's the first time we've had it on the iPad. So go ahead and check up here if you want to see. Let's go ahead and erase these. Grab this guy. From right there. Back to our properties. Go and give him no fill. And kind of a silver stroke. Head to our stroke properties. We're going to set this to be on the inside. All right. Not bad. So far, the only time we've seen any hiccup was right there at the loading document where it spun a little bit as it was loading up the artboard. Now, I'm not sure why that would have happened, but it's probably just some hiccup. So there doesn't really seem to be any issues doing basic tasks here in Illustrator. Now, of course, this is not a super huge document. And depending on the type of work that you do in Illustrator, you can end up with very large documents. For example, if you actually are an Illustrator more than a designer, you can end up with very, very large documents dealing with tons and tons of layers, different vector paths. And then if you go ahead and you add in some textures on top of that, they 
they can get quite large. I'm not going to do a full on test to do that because I'm not an illustrator. And so I couldn't duplicate that workflow very well for the type of thing a graphic designer is doing as far as logo design, layout design, it looks like it's going to be able to handle that stuff fine. Again, this document's not pushing anything to the limits, but what we're really checking here is just to see if Illustrator runs because there is a chance when you go through a transition like this where it just won't run at all. If Rosetta 2 wasn't here, Illustrator just wouldn't run. It just couldn't run on the M1 architecture because it's not written for that. And so Rosetta 2 is doing just an incredible job of making this thing work in a non-native environment, which I just can barely even comprehend, but it's doing it with very complex apps. Um, I've seen other people using Photoshop and Premiere, like I said, After Effects seem to struggle quite a bit in the one test I saw with that, but overall it is very impressive. And it's not Adobe that's doing anything. This is exactly the same Illustrator application that we had before. This is the 2021 release that they released at Adobe Max, and that's it. Like nothing has changed for this. It's just being run through Rosetta 2. So the gains that we see on native apps should just be mind blowing because this is running so well. Now I don't have an old Intel base model MacBook Air to compare this to. And so I can't do just like an apples to apples comparison. My main computer is the iMac that's over there. You've probably seen it in some of my videos and it's actually quite old. It's a 2013 iMac. And so we're looking at like a seven year old model year. I've had it for about six years. It was pretty spectacular out at the time that I bought it 16 gigabytes of RAM a terabyte of storage and it still works pretty well but there are some hiccups along the way it definitely struggles to run Illustrator when things get larger and that kind of thing it can struggle for sure it struggles with some video editing applications and so I do want to try a video editing on here so I might try editing this video on here with DaVinci and see how that goes there is a native version of DaVinci it's a beta version but it is native out for these Macs and so I might try that out next maybe I'll just try editing this video here but overall very impressed and I feel like if Illustrator is your main application, you would probably be safe going ahead and using one of these Macs, but I still wouldn't recommend going out and buying one right now just because they're new, because there are going to be much better Macs coming down the line, as amazing as these are, and they are truly mind blowing. The next set is going to be better. So overall, very impressed. I hope you found this video helpful to see somebody actually running Illustrator on an M1 Mac in Big Sur. And now I wanna hear from you. Go ahead and drop in the comments. Let me know what you're thinking about these M1 Macs, what you're thinking about running your Adobe programs on there or running your Affinity programs on there. I know the Affinity programs are just going to run amazing on here because they're already written for native apps and they were featured in the keynote. And so it's very obvious that they're going to run super well. And I don't know that I need to show you that to you guys. Again, this isn't going to be my main machine, so I'm going to still be using Affinity over on the iMac and on the iPad most of the time, but this is really just incredible to see. It makes me so excited for the future of Mac and what the possibilities are going to be for us as creators on these new amazing machines, especially as more of them come out, more professional ones come out, it's going to be amazing for us. So go ahead, drop in the comments, let me know what you're thinking. Are you getting a new computer? Are you waiting? If you're a Windows user, are you thinking about switching from Windows to Mac because of these incredible performance gains. Just let me know what you're thinking and let me know if there's other things that you would like to see me do on this M1 Mac. We'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.